Hey everyone, what's up? So here's something really hot. A DIY mini PCB hot plate that is entirely made from scratch. The idea here was to make a small and minimal reflow hot plate that can be used for SMT reflow work on small PCBs. I previously made a huge hot plate that uses an iron element to reflow PCBs but the problem with it was its size and lack of temperature control system. This version is small and have a cut off feature that works by taking reading through a thermistor and then cutting the power by turning the MOSFET off. When powered by a 12 volt source, it can reach up to temperature of 193 degrees Celsius. The temperature can even rise higher if powered by a slightly higher voltage source. This project is still in its infancy, so the maximum temperature and the final code are not finalized yet. But it somewhat works. There also exists a commercial mini hot plate, Miniware MHP30 and I wanted to make a DIY version of that mini hot plate that works similarly or better than the commercial product. This video is gonna be about the whole build process of this hot plate. So without any further ado, let's get started. An SMT reflow hot plate is a device that is used for soldering SMD components to the PCB by mean of heat transfer. It consists of an heating element that heats up the hot plate surface to high temperatures like 200 degrees Celsius and above. PCB that is placed on the surface of hot plate gets hot enough to reach solder paste melting temperature. As the result, the solder paste melt and components get permanently attached to their pads. Previously, I've made a hot plate that uses a cloth iron element as heat source. It's been working properly for more than a year, but I wanted to make a miniaturized version of that device by using PCBs. But why use PCB for this build? Due to the fact that we can create coils directly on the PCB layer and use them as heating element. Let me explain how. As we all know, when electricity is passed through any material that has some resistance, heat is generated. We make coils in the PCB design. These coils are essentially long copper lines, each of 1 mm wide track. This coil has a resistance of 1.9 ohms. So if we pass electricity through it, the coil heats up and we can use this setup as a small heating element. Also making a PCB design and getting it fabricated without doing any physical editing is an easy and hassle free thing. As for the brain of this project, an AT Tiny 13 was used because of its minimal design and low cost, making it suitable for this project. It doesn't support existing OLED display library, so AT Tiny 85 could be used in the next version. As for the PCB design, we start first by preparing a schematic that consists of four main parts: the coil, the microcontroller setup, MOSFET at switch setup and AMS1117 voltage regulator. The coil was made from tracks laid out in a rectangular form on the both layer of PCB. Track width was about 1mm. To drive this coil, there's an N-channel MOSFET IC on this board that is connected with a minimal ATtiny 13A microcontroller. Because we will be using 12 volt to drive the coil, an AMS1117 voltage regulator was being used here to drop 12 volt to 5 volt for the ATtiny 13 to work. After finalizing the PCB and generating its Gerber data, I send it to Seed Studio for sample. Blue solder mask and white silkscreen PCBs were ordered. I received PCBs in a week and their quality was super great, considering the rate which was also pretty low. The first step is to apply solder paste to each component pad. We use regular SNPV solder paste that has melting temperature of 140 to 270 degrees Celsius. And to apply the solder paste, a solder paste syringe with a wide nozzle is being used. We then use an ESD tweezer to carefully pick and place all the SMD components in their assigned place one by one, which took like 30 seconds stop. But the result was a perfect PCB with all the components placed in their location. 
After pick and place process, we carefully lifted the whole circuit board and just place it on my DIY SMT hot plate, which is also homemade, just like this project. After a few minutes, when the hot plate reaches the solder paste melting temperature, this hot reflow process will solder all the component. Next, we add DC barrel jack to the circuit and use a regular soldering iron to solder it in its place. To finally complete this board, we add PCB standoff to all four sides of the board. PCB standoff lifts the circuit and acts as a stand for this board. ATtiny13A is an AVR microcontroller that can be flashed via an ISP programmer like an USB ASP or we can make a simple ISP programmer by using an Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano board. You can check out one of my videos on this topic. For flashing this MCU, I use my existing AVR flasher which is an Arduino Nano that runs Arduino as ISP sketch. Here's the main code that I use. Please note that this sketch is not completely finalized and it take wrong readings. However, the heating part is properly working. The hot plate's onboard thermistor isn't working properly. So I added an external temperature sensor for the measurement. After turning on the hot plate, the temperature slowly increases until after a few minutes, it reaches the maximum temperature of 240 degrees Celsius, which is crazy hot. This temperature can be further increased if we increase the voltage fed to the coil. For the actual test, we take a small PCB and add solder paste to the component pad. Next, we pick and place the component on the test PCB. At last, we add test PCB on the reflow hot plate and wait for a couple of minutes. The PCB hot plate melts the solder paste and the component gets soldered to their pads properly. I recommend using less temperature solder paste while working with the setup. I'm using a normal solder paste that requires a temperature between 180 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius, but a solder paste that has a melting temperature of 150 to 180 degrees Celsius could work better with this project. The PCB hot plate works and it's able to solder a small board with no major issues. There are some things that need improvement in major remodeling. We first have to improve the temperature measurement unit on this board. I'm thinking about using a proper temperature sensor this time that is capable of measuring temperatures up to 500 degrees Celsius. As for the design, we need an OLED screen to display the current temperature. Version 2 will include these two points as well as an improved body. This version serves as a concept for now. Overall, I am pretty happy with the result. This hot place is small and so inexpensive that why would we ever want to buy an overpriced hot plate? We can create our own that can easily rival the actual product. If you need any help regarding this project, do leave a comment. Thanks for watching this video and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.